Hey everybody, hope everybody's doing great. So far, we were given a quick introduction to functions and how to use them earlier in the course. And then we kind of went over some theory about writing user-defined functions and how they work. So this time, we're going to get into some practice and actually write our own user-defined functions. And we're going to learn by doing, we're going to build a simple circuit that detects the level of light or the intensity of light and gives an output on the serial monitor. So before we go any further, I want to say that if you guys haven't watch the lesson on analog read and using analog read. I strongly, strongly suggest you do so. This is because we'll be using the analog read function in this lesson and also going forward in a lot of the other lessons. And the lesson on analog read covers the Arduino's ADC and how to use it and ADCs in general really and talks about how ADCs work and gives some information about how they work and why we're gonna be doing what we're doing when we use the ADC and analog read in this lesson and other lessons coming up. So unless you already watched the lesson on analog read or you already have a pretty good understanding of the Arduino's ADC, analog read, and how ADCs work in general, I strongly suggest you go back and watch it. So let's go ahead and take a look at our circuit and talk about it real quick. Okay, so here is our circuit and it's real simple. We're just gonna use, we have a 220 ohm fixed resistor and what's known as a photoresistor or an LDR. And LDR stands for light dependent resistor. And there are many sensors out there capable of detecting or measuring light. But the photoresistor is one of the cheapest and easiest ones to use. It's just a resistor whose resistance changes according to the amount of light it's exposed to. And this particular one, the darker it is, the higher the resistance gets. And the more light you shine on it, the lower the resistance gets. There's a ton of uses for these devices and this type of circuit. Uh, you could build something that turns on a light when it gets dark or detects motion and flicks on a light when it sees you coming. The possibilities are really endless for this type of circuit. And of course, if you want more complexity, you may have to add other additional components and such. But this is the basic circuit. This is the basic gist of detecting light and measuring it with Arduino. Real quick, we see here we have one end of the fixed resistor going to 5 volts. And then on the other end, we have the LDR connected to it. And then the other end of the LDR is going to ground. And we see where the LDR and the fixed resistor meet. We have a wire going to one of the analog pins. This one is pin A5. You could use any analog pin, A0 through A5. We just picked A5. And this type of circuit is called a voltage divider. And I do go into more detail on voltage dividers later. But just to give you some basic overview, its purpose is to create an output voltage that's a fraction of the input voltage. So the fixed resistor sees 5 volts at one end, and it's fixed, so it doesn't vary. Since the resistance of the photoresistor, or LDR, varies depending on the amount of light, the output voltage, or the voltage that pin A5 sees, will also vary. And by measuring that, we can gain information about the intensity of the light in the room or whatever we're doing with it in our situation. So we're going to go ahead and feel free to hit pause if you need to take a look at the circuit and wire it up. But we're going to go ahead and jump into the IDE. First, we're going to write some code and we're just going to do it the way we've been doing it, just writing code. And then we're going to take that code and we're going to functionize it, so to speak, or encapsulate it into a function after we get the circuit working with the code. Okay, everybody, here we are in the IDE, and we're going to write some code. First, we're going to write the program the way we normally would. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's think about what we need. So we need to have a variable for the pin number, and you know that, that hard coding pin numbers isn't the best way, so we're going to create a variable for this, and we're going to do something new. So check this out. And I'm going to use a byte because it don't take up a lot of space and there's no need to have a huge number. It's just a pin number. So we are going to use analog pin 5 and this time I did include the A. I could have wrote it like this and left the A out, but just for clarity, I'm going to go ahead and include that. Both of those methods will work. And the first thing we notice here is we have this, this new keyword const or c-o-n-s-t and this is what's known as a qualifier and it stands for constant as you may have guessed and it modifies the behavior of the variable kind of making it read only so the variable can't be changed later in the program this is usually a good practice we haven't talked about really a lot about scope yet and we will shortly 
but this variable declared out here has a global scope and it can be used and accessed by any function in the program. So if we wrote a thousand lines of code, then any function could inadvertently use or modify this variable. But the const keyword stops that and kind of locks it in place and makes it read only. Now, some of you that are into programming, if you're into C or C++, might have seen something like this. And this is another way to do the, the same thing. And when you're using pound define statement, you don't use a semicolon. This is what's known as a preprocessor directive. And honestly, it is not recommended to use this for this purpose. The Arduino reference doesn't recommend it, and neither do I. Just for now, when we need to make sure a variable cannot be modified, we're just going to use the const qualifier. And I'm going to make a comment here. Okay, so we have a pin number, and we're just going to call it LDR pin. And remember, LDR stands for light dependent resistor. So in setup, we're going to want to print something to the serial monitor. So as usual, we need to do a serial.begin in order to do that. So let's do that. So that pretty much takes care of setup. Really not a whole lot more to do there. We just want to initialize a serial monitor and set the baud rate to 9600. Now, what we want to do is with our simple circuit, we have the LDR connected to analog pin five so the Arduino can get a reading. Let's declare an integer and let's just call it light level and let's set it equal to whatever analog read sees on pin five. There we go. That should do the trick. Now we want to print that level. It's going to be a number. It's going to be a number from 0 to 1023. And remember, guys, the higher the number, the darker it is for this particular resistor. So if it's 1023, it's completely pitch black. And if it's closer to 0, then it's full on bright shining on the sensor. So I'm going to do a serial.println. We want that on a new line. And we want to print the light level that typing strikes again now i mean just looking at a bunch of numbers is kind of boring but just for kicks i want to demonstrate this to you guys here let me hook up the arduino and upload it serial monitor open and here we go really fast we have just a bunch of numbers and i'm going to shine a light on it we can see that the numbers change um not really interesting to look at so let, let's make this a little bit more fun shall we what can we do to make this program actually interesting and meaningful? If it's too dark, maybe we want it to print something on the serial monitor letting us know that, hey, it's dark in here. Because if we're monitoring conditions in a different room, for example, we may not know. So let's try that. And we're going to use our old friend, the if statement for this. Perfect for an if statement. If light level. And remember, the higher the number, the darker it is. So I'm going to go with 1,000. So if light level is 1,000, or greater than 1,000, rather, then we want to print something on the serial monitor. Or else, we want to print something else if it's light. As you can see, this is going to run through... Let me check my spelling. This is going to run through the program pretty fast. So let's put in a small delay of a second. So that way we can see things change. Okay, so here we go. It is kind of a cloudy day and I have the blinds kind of open. And here in the room that I'm in, I can see perfectly fine. Um, it's not, again, it's not a very sunny day, but there's enough light in here where I can see fine. So on my desk, I have a small cardboard box, and I'm going to use it to cover the sensor. 